everyone and welcome to Whisk and Knives. Today I'm going to be showing you on my first cooking episode how we do Brunswick stew down here in the south. And typically it's done over a fire, uh, usually in a cauldron or a big kettle. But today we're actually just going to use the Ninja Foodi or uh, Instapot. The same recipe would apply for both. Um, I have the Ninja Foodi, so that's what we'll be doing today. Typically this recipe is made down here in the south in the Virginia area. So I'm in the North Carolina area and it's typically done with chicken, uh, corn, lima beans, and potatoes. Um, I have seen some with gamier meat, but this is not going to be that episode. Today we're just going to do it with the traditional chicken breast. Um, and then as well, several people might even tell you that they have secret family recipes uh, where they don't even know, they don't share out what the recipe is with everybody else. Um, this is not my secret family recipe because it's so secret they wouldn't even share it with me. So. Stay tuned and hopefully you'll enjoy this wonderful stew we're making today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some butter. And we're going to set this thing on saute. Put it on medium and start that up. That's the first step we're going to do. Alright, so in your pot on medium heat, you're going to want to melt that butter nice and down. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you add the four tablespoons of butter, which I've already added in here, and I've already got going up quite a little bit with the medium heat. You want to melt that down until it looks something like this. Come on up here. So, once it gets nice and melted, you're going to want to add one large sweet Vidalia onion and a few tablespoons of all right so you're gonna want to add the onion and a few tablespoons of crushed garlic and we're gonna let this stir it in and let this brown up and caramel so we're gonna stir that around until it gets down maybe sweat it out so all these uh, onions get caramelized. Now, so once this onions, because we put the onions in here, we put the garlic in here. Again, the recipe can be found down below on the website um, for it being an Instant Pot or a Ninja Foodi. Alright, so once this cooks down, we'll come on back and I'll tell you what you do with the other ingredients. Alright, so one thing that you're also going to want to add to this is you're going to want to add some salt. I just like to think Himalayan salt. Fresh to crack. It's just a preference. If you've got table salt, just add table salt. Um, just get a nice seasoning in there. Uh, let's see. And of course, some pepper. We just want to get all that in there. Woo, it's starting to smell good now. Not that it wasn't smelling good, but this is smelling good. Alright, so once this starts getting all caramel up, caramelized up, and looking nice, you're going to want to add a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and smoked paprika to the onions and garlic. And you just want to mix that on in there. So get it all nice and red. Start turning those onions. A nice shade of reddish orange. And then 
to this, I have a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce and a tablespoon of liquid smoke. Hickory. You could use the other kind. Um, I think mesquite's the other one. I just particularly like the sweetness of the hickory. So we're going to add the quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce and tablespoon of liquid smoke. And we get that in there. All right, once you add in the seasoning of the cayenne pepper and smoked paprika, and then you add the tablespoon of liquid smoke, along with the quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, you're going to want to add the chicken. And I like to just have the butcher go ahead and trim it all up for me at my local grocery store. Because there's nothing else you do. You just throw the chicken in. Like, it's that simple. You, I literally do this before I go to work and have a huge pot, oh, we don't want that in there, a huge pot of this uh, when I get home. Then you're gonna wanna wash your hands. Always wanna wash your hands when you're working with the chicken. let that cook a little bit just like that all right so once I've added the chicken in there another thing that I'll add in there and you could add that seasoning before or after you do the pressure cooker part it doesn't really matter um, the recipe will probably say add it after but you could add it before it doesn't really matter um, just as long as you get the most of the chicken stock in there when you go to actually pressure cook this so I just added six cups of chicken stock. I already added four cups and then that was another one. You can use your own homemade or you can use store-bought. I particularly just use store-bought because it's easier for the chicken broth. Sorry, not the stock, for the chicken broth. And then you add that in there and that's typically one and a half of those like, you know, Swanson. Not sponsored by the way, but Swanson. They have the containers of chicken broth, that's typically uh, two and a half, would be six cups. So two and a half of those. Then, you take your pressure cooker, and we will set this on pressure cook high. So pressure cook on high, um, I typically will set it for 20. There might be another, it might be overdone by them, but it's nice and tender. So what you do is you set it for 20 and you go take a break, go watch a movie. I'm probably gonna go finish up uh, Captain America because I'm in the middle of a Marvel uh, Avengers marathon right now. I'm starting with the first one. But when this starts going, let it go for the 20 minutes and then we'll come back once it's done with that 20 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna take a time out, take a little break from the cooking. And it may sound like I'm telling you how to cook this in the Ninja and also on top of the stove and in a crock pot. If you'd like to see the crock pot and you'd also like to see um, maybe on top of the stove, leave a comment down below and I'll type one up and we'll put it up on the website so you can get a stovetop Brunswick stew recipe. Um, but for now, let's head on back into the kitchen where you can see me finish up this recipe. All right. All right. So as we discussed with the Instapot, you let it go for the 20. It's counting down now for almost the 20. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it sit in there. Just keep bathing in those juices uh, for another 20. So, hey, Google, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes starting now. So. When the 20 minutes is up, we'll go ahead and release the pressure naturally by itself basically and um, we'll start chopping up the chicken.
Hey Google and timer. That's your 20 minute timer. All right, so once it's come to the end of waiting at the 20 minutes, we go ahead and we release. That will take a while. All right, so the 20 minutes came. I went ahead and released it. It's gonna like make a loud noise because it's letting the steam out, but we already still got that started. In this bowl here, I have a quarter cup of our brown sugar. Uh, the tab back here has gone ahead and lowered down, which lets me know it's safe to release this bad boy. Whew. Fog in the glasses today. Alright, so I've gone ahead and released it. And I'm going to pull it up out the way over here. And we're going to get us a cutting board and one of our sharp knives. And... You could do this many different ways. I've seen where people have gone ahead and used a blender, like a, not a blender, but a hand mixer to mix it all up. I'm gonna make this pretty simple for all y'all that don't have any of that stuff. It's very simple. You just grab the chicken. Look how, look how, look at that seasoning and how juicy this just is. I mean, if you were here and you could smell this, this thing it smells delicious. And we're going to add that to the brown sugar. You don't have to add it to the brown sugar. If you add to another one, but it's right here. I just like to make sure all my chicken is out. Oh, see? It's just falling apart. Now, like I said, you can do it. And if you have a hand mixer, you could even just do it just like this. It's really just up to whatever your preference is. I've even seen people take forks and kind of tear it apart. I mean, this is a small batch. When I was younger and I used to make this thing, I was over a fire. We had a gigantic old oil drum. You put it on the same thing that you would uh, burn your, your trash in, in the fire pit below. I mean, you wouldn't burn trash while you're doing this, but it'd be the same burn barrel that you would use for burning your trash. So once you collect all this up, hold on, add it with the brown sugar and everything right back on in. Cleaning off your stove, cleaning off your work area, getting your mise en place together. <sighs> the mise, or your mise en place, is literally meaning getting everything together and in its place. Or as my old cooking teacher in high school used to play, is mise en place, get your stuff together, or mise en place, get your together. So. we get the rest of our meats together. You can use fresh if you want. You can do your own beans if you like it. Um, I just find it simpler to do it the old fashioned way. So, we're gonna get two cans of llama beans. So it's two cans of llama beans or butter beans, pretty much the same thing, 15 ounce cans. Add those 
to your Instapot. These is the same thing you would do if you had the crock pot. If you did this on top of the stove, you would just add these in there. And really the rest of it is just cooking it up to all this is nice and tender. But then after you're done with the lima beans, you add two 15 ounce cans of shoe peg corn. Now I sent this recipe to my brother in Florida and his first response is where do I find shoe peg corn? So I told him we could get it at any store, honestly. But when I actually went to the store today, I went to a different store and they didn't have it. So it's basically white corn, sweet white corn. It looks something like this. Just white corn and really small. That's all you need. Two 15 ounce cans of the shoe peg corn. And we almost get into the top. Oh, hello, tomato. Are you back again? You know, you have food in your bowl, so I don't know why you're here. Yeah? Well, All right, after you add the corn, really, you, you want the corn? I don't think cats like corn. Might be wrong. So, then you take some diced up, and I've diced these up already, diced up russet potatoes, just two potatoes, just, just enough to fill one of your quarts, basically. And these quarts are perfect for, These quarts are perfect pretty much for storing this because you're going to fill up about, I'd say six of these. Maybe a little more. Depends on how long it cooks down, how much evaporates. And while this is going, you just leave it on warm. That's what mine is set to. I just leave it to warm right now. And you're going to add one. 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes with tomato puree. I'm going to add all that in. Now, if you give me a second. Now, I'm going to show you what this should look like. It should look like this. And you're just going to stir all this in. Let it go. Now, a couple ways. If the camera is shaky, that is because Mr. Tomato has decided he's going to help. But, alright, you just gonna let this go. Uh, you can crock pot it for, I've crock potted it for six hours, or you can pressure cook it probably in like 20 and it'll get done um, like that. Well, for this demo, we can go for. pressure cooking it. I always put the, the light on so I can pressure and we're gonna not pressure we're gonna slow cook on high for four hours with the pressure cooker lid back on because on these you gotta put the pressure cooker lid back on and I always close it so it doesn't vent out so it can just build up some more pressure in there and just let all of those seasons in there get marinated together and start working together. You can have a delicious soup. Let me tell you. So this is what you're going to want your Brunswick stew looking like after, I said four hours but on high, but I actually had to go a little bit longer. Again, you can actually just pressure cook it um, to make it go faster, but after six hours in the crock pot, you got your lovely Brunswick stew. So once that six hours is up, you're just going to take your bowl. Get a big old ladle. Oh, this is looking good. 
good. Smelling good too. And you got yourself a good bowl of Brundrick stew for dinner. Or lunch. Either way. Make sure Hopefully you'll enjoy that recipe. I'm going to leave the link down below to the website um, that will lead you to the recipe. And don't forget to hit the like button. If you'd like, you can leave some comments down below and hit the subscription button. As well as try to hit that bell so you can get notified each week when I drop another recipe for you. I'm Topher Harris and thank you for tuning in to Whisk and Knives.